and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.D. Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this first video tutorial of our 10-part video tutorial series on module development, I want to introduce you to what project we're going to create, which is the flag application module. And I also want to get you started on the info file and dot module file, two of the key files that you're going to need when you're creating any type of module in Drupal. But before we get started, as always, I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase any of my video tutorial series uh, so that you have them permanently. Uh, that purchase goes to help support the creation of additional video tutorials. So everything is uh, greatly appreciated uh, when you make a purchase. Additionally, if uh, maybe you're not interested in owning these, but you'd still like to help out, always appreciate a thumbs up, a comment, or even if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That said, let's get started. I'm over at uh, localhost Toronto website uh, developer, TWD box seven. So this is just my local server uh, here on my desktop. And what I do is I have a nice Drupal seven site that I use for my development. And you'll see here that I've got this, uh, this little link here which is remove your application and apply for this node. So what this is, is I'm using the flag module and I've created my own flag. And so if I go in here, you'll see that I've got flag application. And so this is the custom module that we're gonna build. What this allows you to do is actually go ahead and say, click here and apply for this node. And it uses the flag module to add in uh, these flags. I can go ahead and click on a whole bunch of apply and I can actually remove my application. But the idea being here that users can come and apply uh, for an application uh, to do anything. So you could use this as a job site, uh, have people click and apply, and then you automatically get their resume. Um, but now I can go over to structure, I can go into flags, and I can go flag applications. And I can see here that username Yorsk has gone ahead and applied for Peter's donat, uh, donation event, uh, as well as test event. And you can see here that the status is pending, um, but we also get the actual node ID that the person's applied for. We get the user ID of the actual person applying as well as their username. And then we get the flag ID that they've actually, uh, this is the flag that's in the actual database. And so you can approve and deny these. So I can go ahead and I can approve this and submit. Um, and you'll see I've got some development messages here. But the idea being that uh, rules will then allow us to interact when a flag is uh, approved or denied. So in the module development course that we'll be walking through in the next 10 video tutorials, we'll actually look at how we actually integrate with rules so that we allow people to extend what will happen when uh, something's approved or denied. Maybe you get an email to administrator, uh, or maybe the, the node is locked, or maybe even that person is allowed to edit the node. Uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. That's why we use rules because we never know what that end game is gonna be. So. That said, why don't we go ahead and let's get started. So a couple of things that we're gonna need for this project. Uh, let's do that first. So I'm gonna go over to drupal.org slash project slash flag. And so you wanna grab this module first, I already have it. And you'll see that, you know, there's this 7.x 2.1, 7.x 3.2. Go ahead and grab the 7.x-3, whatever version happens to be out at the time when you're looking at this. Uh, but you wanna make sure it's seven uh, and three. Uh, major release uh, is three. That's what the two and the three denote. Um, so go ahead, we're gonna build off of three. With that said, you wanna go over uh, as well and grab the Devel module. Uh, Devel is short for development. Uh, this is gonna help us because we're gonna be using this for debugging. And so go ahead and grab this module as well. So now with those uh, downloaded, what we are going to do is we're gonna head back over and I'm just gonna go to my modules page and um, you'll see that I was actually using some code. So obviously the code exists. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just gonna delete that and we'll work from scratch. Actually, I can't do that. What I have to do is uninstall that module because I've gone ahead and I've installed it. So I'm going to do that. There we go. Now with that uninstalled, I can go back over here and I can actually delete this. So uh, now where we are is we're, we're brand new, we're fresh, we know we have a module idea, we wanna go ahead and we create this, so let's do that. So first thing that you have to do is you're gonna to navigate to your site. So here I'm at TWD box seven, this is what my site's actually called, here's my Drupal installation, and you'll see that I have this sites folder. So you're gonna click into that, and now I've got all and I've got default. Um, the all and default, so just a brief sidestep here, the all is referring to all sites that you might have installed off of this code base. So it's possible when you install Drupal to take Drupal and then install multiple sites that all run off of the same code so that when you're you know, upgrading your sites, you're just upgrading the code once and then it applies to all the different sites. 
So you might have another folder here if you're using a subdomain that would be a specific subdomain name, uh, but I don't have that. So I'm going to put everything in the sites all folder. Uh, it's never wrong to do this. Um, the all folder, if you did have multiple sites, um, the all folder would be accessible by all of those different sites. So now I'm going to go into modules. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a folder here. But typically, if I were doing this and I were creating some kind of custom module that might be small or, you know, for a specific need, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll create a new folder and I'll just call that custom. And then I'll put my custom module in there. So um, for the sake of this video tutorial, let's go ahead and actually do that. Um, and then I'm going to create a new folder in here. And this is going to actually have my code. And so this folder that you're going to create is going to be the module name and it has to match the different uh, files that you're going to create for that module. Uh, so if you remember when we started this, I had flag application. And so that's what I'm going to create. You'll notice that there's no spaces because you can't have that on a server. So everything's underscored uh, and you can go back and you can actually see that with other contributed modules that we have installed, like advanced form, advanced help and so on. So Drupal knows it will actually look inside this folder, uh, anything in the sites, all modules folder. Uh, so it'll go into custom and it'll find my, my code. So don't worry about the fact that we're in this custom folder. Uh, but now in here, what I need to do is create two specific files that, um, you're going to need for any module. So here I'm going to create flag application.info. And it's just a warning there about changing the extension. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create flag application.module. You'll always need a dot module file because that's where uh, your code will reside. It's not the only file that uh, could contain code, but you definitely need a dot module file. So let's take this flag application.info and let's edit that. Um, so I want to go ahead and I want to close that previous uh, code. So I'm going to go in here and go to my uh, .info. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste some code in here, which I don't actually have available right now. So here, I'm going to walk you through this code. Uh, you'll see the first thing that we've got here is name. Um, this is something that you have to define. <clears throat> so you, it's, the simple syntax for it is just name equals and then whatever the name of your module is. Uh, so I could call this anything. It doesn't actually have to match the module name here, but that's the convention. So you want to do that. Um, but just in case you know you're wondering, this could be anything that you want. Uh, but just typically match it up. So this is flag application description. Um, this is the description that I'm going to provide for the module. So you'll see on our modules page, uh, there will be descriptions of all the modules. They're actually defined here. Um, so what I've gone ahead and just, you know, flag entities uh, and have an administrator review and approve. It should be approve. Um, so that's what the description of this module is. That's what this module does. Um, the dependencies. So this is actually an array. This is not required if you were doing some other module development or using this as a jumping off point. Um, but what dependencies does is it makes sure that you have the other module installed that you're going to be relying upon. So uh, dependencies here, um, I'm relying on flag. And then what you can actually do is you can define the version that of that module that you're dependent upon. So remember I mentioned we're using 3.x, not 2.x. So I've gone ahead and I've defined that here. So I've got 3.x. And then I'm mentioning uh, core. So core is equal to Drupal 7. Uh, so this is a Drupal 7 module. And then lastly, I've gone ahead and I've defined a package. And what this means is it's where the module is going to be found in the listings. Um, and this is just under flags. So I can go ahead and I can save that. And then I can go back over to my page. And then I'll go ahead and I'll reload this. And I actually don't want to be on uninstall. I'm just going to go back to list the modules. And so here you'll notice that I've got module filter module uh, enabled. So that's why mine might look a little bit different from yours. If you don't have that, uh, I'd highly recommend you go grab that. But I can go and I can click into flags and then you'll see here I've got flag application and my description flag entities and have an administrator review and approve. Um, and it allows me to uh, it mentions that it's requiring flag um, and we're enabled. So we're good there. And I can go ahead and I can actually check that off and I can go save my configuration. And then if I go back down to flags, you'll see here that I've got flag application checked off. 
um, but it doesn't actually do anything because I don't have any module code. So in the next video tutorial, we'll take a look at the dot module file and get that started. Uh, just before we do that, one thing I want to show you here, if I went ahead and I went 2.x, I go ahead and save this, come back over to this page, reload, you'll see I got incompatible with version 3.x. So that's why that's pretty cool. Um, if you're, especially if you're using different versions of different modules. Um, so again, hopefully this video tutorial helped you uh, give you a brief introduction into the .info file. Also get you set up on how we're going to create this uh, this project in this video tutorial series. Again, if this helped you, please leave me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, use a comment. Uh, I always appreciate if you use those comments rather than direct messaging me. Uh, it really helps me to, to manage the influx of questions that I get. But also there are going to be other people that have the exact same question as you. So if you use comments, people can read through that and it helps alleviate my workload. With that said, hopefully we'll see you for the next video tutorial. Until then, thanks very much for watching.